Good morning team. Uh, today we're going to take a drive on some freight going down to uh, pick up in Blytheville and then bring it back through here. Taking you guys on a day in the life end to end on some freight so you can see what Midwest Regional looks like. Uh, five, a little after five right now. I uh, already have my breakfast, my oatmeal, and now I'm going to go and try and get in the gym here for a little bit before we try to be rolling a little after six. So, uh, come along. Let's see what it looks like. The Millennium Building at the Springfield, Missouri Terminal for Prime is unlike any place I have ever worked before. And the people that I've met there really do feel like family. Oh, yeah. Hey, Terry, how are you this morning? Thank you. With amenities that include a company store, a 24-hour cafe diner, over 16 on-site showers, 10 bunk rooms for overnights, a driver lounge, a movie theater, a full basketball court, and of course, my favorite, a well-equipped weight room. Not to mention everything that you need to keep your truck and trailer rolling. This place really does have it all. As we can see here, I'm getting a quick lift in. I always like to get a little sweat before we get into the freight for the day. If I was out over the road, I would be at a Planet Fitness or doing a little calisthenics outside of the truck to start the day. All right, team, so we got into the truck. Uh, now we gotta go find our trailer before we can hit the road. We're at the prime yard. Uh, so that makes it a little nicer because we can get into the gym, kind of schedule our day. Um, so we'll go find the trailer and then grab the students and then hit the road. Uh, big day for right ahead of us. Once we get hooked up to the trailer, we pull up the landing gear and hook up our lines and head towards the exit. All right. Whenever we leave or arrive at the Prime facility, we come through inbound outbound. And this is where all the action happens, from scaling to fueling to inspecting the truck and trailer, even changing our tires to keep us safe over the road, or picking up bills for a repower. This is one of the most vital places on the yard. And you can see as we pull on that our gross weight is just over 30,000 pounds, 15 tons. We always need to know our weight on all of our axles as operators. And this scale shows us the steers, drives, and trailer axles. All right, we got ourselves a trailer. Now we are hooked up uh, at Outbound, uh, just about to hit the road. Um, it be a fun day. Let's get it. Now, once we are all fueled up and we've got our bills, the tech opens the bay door and lets us roll. These guys are the greatest. Thanks, dude. You too. There are a lot of ways to drive as an operator. And that is what makes this industry so great. There's likely a way that you would enjoy. Time of day, I like to run early, four to four typically when OTR. The distances, do you want to run regional, local, OTR, or dedicated? And the type of freight as well. As we can see, the different trailers rolling by here, hoppers and flatbeds, reefers, there really is something for everyone out here. And no matter what, the different scenery always keeps it new and exciting. All right, team, here we are switching drivers at Bub's Quick Sack here in Arkansas. Uh, as you can see on the trucker path, that's uh, kind of a good central point. We're about 100 miles from the 90, heading to Blytheville still. So we're going to switch drivers, let the other student take a little bit, uh, keep running. It's always great to stop in at these mom and pop shops along these smaller highways. And I always try to stop at Bub's here for a cup of coffee, but choose wisely when you're picking your snacks. The right fuel for you and your rig makes all the difference out here. After a short pit stop, back on the road to the shipper. All right. We are now at the 01. Whenever we get to an 01, we got to do some things. First, we go into our messaging, go into our compose. We can see that we need to do our arrival, arrive at location. You guys know what this is? Who remembers? We just talked about it. The 01. Yeah. No drop trailer. Send. Yes. 
All right, team, we got to get all our high vis and PPE on because this place is real particular about it. So, high vis, ear protection, eye protection, head protection, all of it. One of the great things about running Flapid is that the freight is always a puzzle, something we need to solve both mentally and physically with our securement. And if you run an OTR, you never know what the next load is going to be. Looks like we're third in line here. Can't wait to find out what they're loading on the deck. Upon pulling into the bay and staging up with our PPE on, we can see just how massive this manufacturing plant is and just how many coils they have ready to get loaded. We are told we are going to be getting two eye to the sky coils on pallets. So we can begin to mentally plan how to solve our puzzle with our security equipment. But before all that, we need to help the loader center of the freight. Now, these guys typically have done this a bajillion times, but for them to be more efficient, they need our help to let them know when it is centered up. As you can see when I give them a thumbs up. Now, when helping that loader center up the freight, we need to keep in mind that as soon as we sign those bills, we are taking responsibility for the correct securement and safety of that freight. So we need to be absolutely 100% certain that it is loaded clean and correct. It is our CDL that is on the line, but we are up to the task. Now, after the forklift operator gets us loaded, they will go and print the bills for us so we can keep a copy and provide a copy to the receiver upon completion of the load. Now this is one of the things I really enjoy about running Flatbed. It's the camaraderie among the many different workers that we cross paths with all across the country. Now, once we get our bills, it's time to pull out of the bay and secure the load. Now I don't know about you, but I am a competitive person. Who better to compete with than yourself? So I like to time my securements to see just how efficient I can be. It is really worth pointing out that I wouldn't be nearly as efficient without the help of these two absolute all-star students. I gave them both the opportunity to sit it out, and as I do with all the students, but like the great majority that come through Pine, they were both hungry to learn and lean in with this securement. Now this was a pretty simple job. Six cross wraps, three per coil, rubber edges, and one steel tarp bungeed tight. Another thing I love about Flapit is the artisanal quality of it. You can really tell it when you see a high quality securement. And there is always more technique to learn. I want to come on that. 26 minutes. Not my favorite secure time. All right, team, load is secure. Now we gotta send our departure. I'm sure we got our route here. Messaging. Let's see right here. Compose. Depart shipper, flatbed only. This is the 01. Oh, 01. Harping required. Done. Yes, we wanna send it. Send it. Cool. Now, whenever we finish a securement, we want to do a quick pre-trip vehicle inspection again, walking the entirety of the freight and making sure that we didn't leave a bungee on the rail, a rack door open, making sure all the straps or chains are secure, and that nothing is on the deck that could create a hazard for ourselves or others down the road. like that. Secured, ready to rip. Back to the yard. Drop this thing and set on it for the weekend, delivered on Tuesday. Now, as you're just getting started out, we can be a little worried about where to park for the steps. Trucker Path is a great app to let you know where you'll likely have room for a 70 foot long vehicle, as we see on the screen here and how we first learned about Bubs. All right, team, here we are back at Bubs Quick Sack. Uh, switching drivers again. Get both students an opportunity to pull a loaded trailer. As you can see, the trailer is loaded behind me, so we're taking a quick restroom break and back on the road. Beautiful afternoon here in Missouri. The feeling of pulling a loaded trailer is important to the training process as a focus for us. As flatliners, always remember to leave in and out stops to verify or adjust your securement.
All right, team, here we are again, switching drivers, making sure both students get a little bit of access to highway driving, pulling a load of trailer in these hills. We are on the acceleration ramp side, if you can see that. That is the safest place to stop. If you need to stop on an off-ramp or on-ramp, the acceleration ramp is the best because, as you can see, if anyone passes us, they're going just 5, 10 miles per hour at the most. It's not a fatal speed. So if you ever do need to pull off on the acceleration or deceleration, try and get on the acceleration side. All right, guys, let's get back to work. Eleven hours, thirty-nine minutes for an average of eight point five miles per gallon. Pretty good day. All right, team, there you have it. Uh, 560 miles, about 11 and a half hours. Uh, all three of us got out. The guys got to learn descent control with their Jake brakes, uh, got introduced to their paddle shifter, figured out their cruise control, pulled a loaded trailer, very successful day for them, and they got to do a securement, uh, as we saw. So, pretty fun day for us. Uh, we'll finish delivering this in a couple days after the weekend, uh, holiday weekend here. Uh, get this to Pittsburgh, Kansas on Tuesday. So we'll see you for that. All right, team, here we are back at the truck after a nice weekend through the house. Sometimes we get weekend freight it gets through the house and it's a nice opportunity to get together with folks and now we are on to deliver it to its final destination. So, back at it. Now, whenever it's been a few days since we've been on freight, even if we've been at it for a long time, it's a good reminder to be cautious. More accidents occur with drivers around the two year mark than within the first three to six months of driving and that has everything to do with getting too comfortable. So remember to stay focused out here. All right, team, here we are out in Pittsburgh, Kansas. The uh, last little stretch of this is a little hairy, so I wanted to take over and show these guys some best practices. So, here we go. After we arrive at the shipper, we need to send our arrival and check in to see what the offload process looks like. Here, they want us to pull tarps before backing under the crane for the product to get pulled. Now, one nice thing about running regional is you begin to get familiar with certain shippers and receivers and how they like to do things. Now, once we've backed into the bay, we leave our bills on the trailer for the crane up and we sit back and watch the show. Just like that, the deck is empty. And we are ready to enter our departure, head back to Springfield so we can have the student test tomorrow, do a little last minute test prep. So that's a little out and back, picking up in Arkansas, running over to Kansas, Midwest Regional Freight, getting through the yard for a little home time. All in a day's work. Hope you guys enjoyed the trip. See you next time. Go, Lynn.